through uh, 46 trays. It's really important like OK, let me ask you a question before I switch and start explaining and talking about this 10046 trays. Uh, if I ask you a question like if you have a PL SQL code, there is this PL SQL procedure which is running from last uh, 60 minutes, right? And it actually has uh, hundreds or tens of SQL code, uh, SQLs, individual SQLs that are that are written inside it. So how will you troubleshoot? What will be your the approach? Because the problem with the with the PL SQL is you have the SQL ID, but you won't be able to use it against the SQL tuning advisor. So you will go, won't get any automatic recommendations, right? Because ultimately PL SQL doesn't support. Uh, I mean, uh, this, the SQL tuning advisor doesn't support the PL SQL part or the PL SQL code. So how will you troubleshoot a problem that is not related with the single SQL, but is with the PL SQL program, a complete procedure? Anyone? So when we uh, see that means from the session, what are the queries running? Uh, it shows uh, means P, uh, the uh, SQL ID of the PL SQL and the current SQLs. If there are multiple SQL uh, running in a PL SQL block, mm -hmm. uh, both both SQL ID will be shown. But how will you know? Like for example, in this uh, single PL SQL procedure, it actually fires 50 different uh, sub sequels or sequels, right? So which one took maximum amount of time or is the most expensive out of them? Like there is a marginal difference between top five. So how will you be able to judge it? It's not that easy, right? Okay. Mm. So that is why uh, that's one of the use case where you have to generate the 10046 extended trace or also called as the debug traces. So it provides you, uh, you know, uh, information about us uh, about the SQL and that's how you actually enable it like you need to set. I mean, if the time statistics are not set to true in your environment, so you have to set it at the session level using this set time statistics to true and statics level should be set to all in order to get every bit and piece of information and also you need to set the session level the maximum dump file size unlimited because sometime what happens is like if you set any restrictions, so if the file size is big, so uh, it will face some broken pipe errors or some write issues. So that's how you actually set alter session set events 10046 trace name context forever level 12 level 12 as I told you earlier it basically used to get all weight events and bind variable information and then you have to run your query here and once the query is finished then you have to go and disable the tracing event. So you need to go alter session set event this trace name context off that's it. Right. So uh, uh, let me uh, see if I have 46 trace over here. I am here. We have. Uh, let's open the notepad plus plus. OK, so that's how the 10046 uh, reports looks like. So I ran it against uh, uh, the database which was running on 10.2.0.5, right? And uh, you guys from MSDP, you guys are aware about this table, right? Master sample. Not so not me. No. Okay. I think this this table was there in one TM. I'm not sure if the table still exists or not, but master sample, which is part of the BVR PT DAT2 schema. OK. Oh. All right. Hmm. So what happened is this this procedure uh, runs on the database and it, it started taking a lot of time. So customers started complaining about it. So what uh, we plan like we generated the 10446 and then manually called the uh, the that the, that stored procedure and allow it to come to to fully complete it actually took 40 50 minutes to complete a single execution or a single run and then we disabled the traces we copied the traces because the problem with the 10046 trace is not like 10053 trace it's basically uh, you always see some random some gibberish uh, gibberish written inside right it's not that easy to uh, to decode so that's basically kind of a raw trace file so you have to convert it into something human readable using tkprof utility tkprof is the transient kernel profiler which is which always 
present in your database. Like for example, if you go and here type tkprof, you get all of the options, right? So it's an inbuilt utility tkprof where you actually need to provide the sorting options. Here if you see so many sorting options exist. PRCNT, that's basically number of times parse was called. So what we actually used, we used uh, Exila, Fetchila and PRCila, right? And these three are basically to sort. So talking about the PRCila is basically when you want to sort everything that is there in the 10046 trace on the basis of the elapsed time, right? So I've, I've actually uh, sorted on the basis of Exila. Uh, Exila is what? Exila is elapsed time executing the, the the execution time out of the total elapsed time it actually took, right? So and then the FCLA. So that's the uh, elapsed time fetching fetching time. So accordingly, it sorted everything that was there in the raw trace file, and then we have got the final uh, trace uh, ready. And according to this trace, this was one of the SQL which which was considered as the most expensive among all of them, right? So what you have to do if you if you are seeing right now, there are some columns like. If we talk about this select count all from this table where the master sample number is X, Y, Z, whatever, so it spends most of the time on the elapsed time part, right? On the fetching time, basically, right? No time was spent on parsing, right? And no time was spent on execution. Execution was pretty fast, but the fetch phase was really expensive. Right now, if you go down. It also provides you some other information like weight specific is information too, but somehow it's not here, but it always it also provides you some weight events information as well. Like what is the weight event that the SQL was found waiting at the time of execution or during that particular runtime? Right, and then it provides you some a simple uh, execution plan as well. Correct. So now talking about the count, what it represents count is just simple. The number of times a statement was passed, executed or fetched, right? So 134 time it got passed, 862 execute and 862 times it got fetched, right? And then talking about the CPU, it's a simple number total CPU in seconds for all of the parse, execute or the fetch calls for the statement, right? So uh, for example, if the, this value is coming to zero here, right? That means uh, uh, it could be a case like the time underscore statistics are not turned on. So let, let, let's not focus about it. Uh, focus on that. Now next is the elapsed time. This elapsed time. Uh, elapsed time is a total elapsed time in second for all of the phases like pass, execute or the fetch calls for the statement. Now what is this disk and query then? Disk is the total number of data blocks that are physically read. I mean when you actually made that IO operations from the disk. Uh, and you, when you read uh, uh, from the data files for all your parse and the fetch and execute calls, <clears throat> correct? And then comes the query. What is this query? This is the total number of buffer received. So this is uh, this is uh, this represents figure. This figure represents the uh, memory scan. So that means during the fetch phase, the SQL spent 45.52 seconds, right? And out of that, it spend most of the time on the query part like you know retrieving buffers uh, maybe in the consistent mode or for other other modes right so now i need to ask you a question what is a consistent get in oracle the cn number should be the same in the data file control file and <laughs> no Consistent gets means uh, the data get. is present in the buffer cache. No, let me help you. The consistent get is when or where the Oracle returns a block from the uh, from the buffer cache, but has to take into account or also it actually checks the um, uh, just to make sure if the block is current at the time of query started or not. I mean, uh, uh, it basically reconstruct it from the rollback information to give you a consistent view. OK, like for example, yeah, question. Uh, please repeat that. Please. Sure, sure, sure. Consistent read. I will tell you, for example, if you are going to read a block, that block is already in the block that is already in the block that is in the exclusive lock mode mein rakha hua hai. because in the block mein value ID is in the block. Now, you have to do it 
तो उसको दस करने के लिए एक रो लेवल लॉक एक्सक्लूसिव मोड में लेना पड़ेगा उसने वो ले रखा है उसको सेशन को एक्सक्लूसिव मोड में ले, लॉक लेने के बाद अब आपका सेशन जाता है एंड यू वांट टू रीड दैट सेम लॉक करेक्ट बट अब उसके लिए क्या है उस उसने तो ब्लॉक को ऑलरेडी मॉडिफाई कर दिया लेकिन अभी तक कमिट और रोल बैक कुछ नहीं चलाया राइट right? तो उस केस में क्या होगा वो जो इन्फॉर्मेशन है वो वैल्यू फोर जो है जो पुरानी वैल्यू थी वो लेकिन क्योंकि अभी तक कमिट और रोल बैक नहीं हुई तो आप लोगों को तो विजिबल नहीं होगी ना वो वो कहा जाएगी वो आपका जाएगा रोल बैक सेगमेंट में अंडू में राइट right? तो अब क्या करेगा आपका सेशन जो है अब अंडू में जाएगा और वो अंडू में से जाके वो रोल बैक इन्फॉर्मेशन पुरानी जो पड़ी थी उसको इन्फॉर्मेशन को उठाएगा और इस ब्लॉक को अब रिकंस्ट्रक्ट करेगा अपने पर्पस के लिए टू गेट अ कंसिस्टेंट व्यू राइट तो दैट इज कॉल्ड अ कंसिस्टेंट गेट और कंसिस्टेंट ब्लॉक करेक्ट ऐसे एक करंट ब्लॉक होता है वॉट इज अ करंट ब्लॉक कोई बताए तो हम लोग पार्सिंग तो जानते हैं ऑलरेडी की वॉट इज अग वॉट इज पार्सिंग करेक्ट ओके All right. Now, अगर हम यहाँ पे देखेंगे now let's understand these statistics. ये है क्या exactly? ये इतना जो मैंने highlight किया है what exactly it represents, right? So, if you take a look, the block received in the consistent mode is one, two, three, five, two hundred, two four, four six, right? During the fetch operation. And since this is the select statement, the blocks are shown during the fetch operation. right because if it's a dml operation then blocks will be shown during the execute operation correct agreed with me right now next comes the misses in the library cache during each call ye kya hai if there is no miss then it won't be mentioned simple the one miss for the sql is very much acceptable why because since when a sql runs for the very first time it needs to be parsed correct and execute and execution plan will be stored so parsing and execute will have one misses So that is why यहाँ पे हमारे को वन मिस दिख रहा है सिंपल करेक्ट को रिलेशन आप समझ पा रहे हो ये मतलब क्या है इन चीजों का ठीक है नाउ इफ यू सी द स्टेटमेंट पार्स कॉल दैट एक्चुअली है लुक हेर दिस वन आम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस देख पा रहे हो ना सो पार्सिंग इज वन थर्टी फोर वट इफ यू सी द स्टेटमेंट आई मीन इट से मिस काउंट इज ओनली वन count is only one. यहां पे तो मिसकाउंट वन ही है ना बैट दैट मींस दैट द स्टेटमेंट वाज पास्ड ओनली वंस एंड वाज स्टोर्ड इन द लाइब्रेरी कैशे एंड फॉर द नेक्स्ट सबसीक्वेंट 133 पार्सेस द सेम पार्स स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम लाइब्रेरी कैशे वाज यूज्ड सो दैट इज व्हाई वी हैव वन मिस एंड हिट 133 टाइम्स एज सिंपल एज दैट राइट सो नाउ सिमिलरली एग्जीक्यूशन प्लान वाज अगेन मेड अप ओनली वंस एंड 861 टाइम्स ओरेकल यूज्ड द सेम एग्जीक्यूशन प्लान फ्रॉम द लाइब्रेरी कैशे I'm talking about the fetch, fetch phase here in the call section, yes. right? Okay. Now, abhi yahan pe kuch dekhoge. There are some abbreviations or short forms used, right? Yeah, CR likha hai, PW likha hai. What are the What are they? Uh, like index fast full scan. A absolutely correct. Uh, yes, CR stands for consistent read. And what is uh, this PW is for physical writes. correct and sometime you will also see some pr that represents physical reads and then time is normal so time is you know the time taken by the step in milliseconds right and then <coughs> sorry and uh, uh sometime you also see uh, you know the cost and the size and sometime in the later version of oracle because this this report was generated on 10.2 so i think from starting from 11g r2 you started seeing some cost size and cardinality specific information too like uh, what is the cost incurred by each of the step and cardinality estimates and specific information and also represent the size of data in that step i mean if we talk about the size okay hmm uh unique scan okay what is an index unique scan anyone uh it will return one row no, uh, for the unique column in the index that is that's fine but in theory what is index unique scan, unique scan what it is 
it will scan the complete index and the unique key. Mm, yeah, you you're almost reached. Yes, so unique scan actually requires an equality predicate simple and a unique or a primary constraint is at that point is sufficient by itself to produce an index unique scan as simple as that. That's why we have only index unique scan. For example, you are doing select all from uh, X, Y, Z where ID equals to 100, right? Because a primary key index exists on the ID column and then the where clause references all of the columns using a quality operator, the optimizer will choose a unique unique scan. Simple, right? Yes. OK, hmm. so now after seeing everything. From the 10046. Uh, so what do you understood? So with the values above, <coughs> we need to make a conclusion and decide whether the to tune the SQL or not. So the rule of thumb is unless we have a locking issue or a very bad performing SQL, we should not worry about the CPU time or the elapsed time here because timing come into the consideration only when we have a bad performing SQLs. So the key is the number of block visits. Both query, I mean query section. I mean, I'm talking about that query call. Uh, the both query and uh, that is again depends or subjected to the read consistency, by the way, and also current, right? And uh, that should be the driving factor here. So segment headers and blocks that are going to be updated are acquired in the current mode, but are all query and subsequent, uh, you know, processing requests the data in the query mode. As simple as that. Correct. So it depends on you. It depends on the current and the query um, query part. So if the numbers are really high, then it's then you should go and uh, should consider uh, uh, to try and tune the SQL. OK, and if it's not, then no, no purpose, no use. All right, I know it's too much uh, at this point to understand, but yes, spend some time reading or generating 10046. So now if you see we've got second SQL here as well. So we've got same set of information available. The SQL text and then followed by the call and specific information, right? And then we've got uh, execution plan here as well. OK. And. Uh, uh, where is it? It also provides the weight event specific information like in this case. OK. All right, let's move. To the pity, so now we are good. We know how to generate the 10046 and what to read from the 10046. OK, 